Hi y'all, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna do another one. This one's gonna be about the batteries and in specifically, it's gonna be about living with the batteries, maintaining the batteries, monitoring the batteries, and if necessary, tweaking the batteries, repairing the batteries. So, this is, these are the batteries of the system. 12 of these batteries that I built on the channel, you've, you've watched all the processes of how I did this. Now, if I had it to do over again, this, this all started three and a half years ago, four years ago. If I had it all to do over again, I'd just buy these, these do-it-yourself battery kits from Jenny Woo. They're amazing. They're fairly inexpensive, cheaper than what I paid to build these myself. And the cells you can get now are far less expensive and have a higher capacity and they're more uh, predictable and consistent. And if you contact Jenny Wu about it, I, I, I don't, I know, I know that it sounds like a sales pitch when I talk about Jenny Wu, but really I just want y'all to not have problems. And that's how I found to not have problems. Contact Jenny Wu. I'll put her email address in the, in the description. But let's talk about these batteries. These batteries. These batteries came from three different suppliers originally. I didn't find Jenny Wu first or even second. I found her third. Everything I bought from her worked great. I bought the first 132 cells from Winnie Wong. I have a video about the pricing and, and the experience of buying from different suppliers. And you know, it, the title of that one is uh, Reduce the Risk When Buying LifePo 4 from China. And I think a whole lot of people benefited from that video. So Winnie Wong was a liar and a crook. And she, she lied about not only what she was gonna send me, but then she sent me used stuff and a whole mishmash of cells. I, I tested each one and I grouped them so that I wouldn't have one weak cell in every battery because the weakest cell is the limit to the capacity of the battery. So I grouped them together so I could get the most capacity out of the cells that I received from her. And I am the most likely to have ongoing problems with the batteries, I, the cells I received from her. The second supplier was Amy Wan, had a great reputation on the do-it-yourself solar form. Her pricing was really high. And um, for the most part, I was happy with the cells. I did have some problems later with them. Um, but, I bought 70 cells from her and the remainder of these cells and all the others because I built, I think I built 27 of these batteries now, 12 of them you see here. And the remainder have all been from Jenny Wu and they've all been great. And the prices keep, keep coming down. So just contact her for what things are, are like now. So these batteries, the good side to this batteries, these batteries are, I can get into them and I can repair them or tweak them easily. I don't have to open much up. I can check the cells and if I've got cells that aren't functioning correctly, if, if I get them top balanced, and then when I get them down to the bottom of their state of charge, if one cell races to the bottom, I know that's a bad cell. I can take that cell out and replace it with another 280 amp hour cell. Yes, it will be of a different version. Yes, it will perform better than the other cells in the battery. But like I said, the weakest cell is the one that determines the capacity of the battery. So if you've got a bad cell that races to the bottom, replace it with one that's not bad and you will bring that capacity of that battery up to the next weakest cell. So, if you got some extra cells or if you need to order some to do that, then you can bring your capacity of your system up by doing it. The other thing that can happen uh, or that has happened is some of the batteries in my system between the time I built them and the time I commissioned my system, they sat for a long time, three, 
years. Um, had a lot going on. Went through a lot of changes. Built a lot of batteries. Um, did a lot of other hobbies. And so during that time, some of the sales, especially amongst the uh, lower quality sales that I got originally, um, they drift from each other. So they were all top balanced in the beginning. I put them all in parallel and top balanced them, but then they drift from one another. And when they do, they that reduces the overall capacity of the battery because if they're not all at the same at the top, then one is gonna reach the bottom early, even if it's not a bad cell just because it drifted down and started at a lower capacity. So you need to get that battery back up to top balance when it's at its, when it's at its 100% state of charge, all those voltages need to be the same at 3.65. And so how do you do that? Well, you could take that whole battery back apart, take all those cells and flip them around and put them into parallel and re-top balance it and then take it all back apart and put it back together as a battery. And yes, you can do that. It's time consuming. Or I'm gonna show you a little trick. This little trick is my little trick. I'm sure other people do it. This little trick is my little trick for me, my comfort level and what I do in my system. I am not telling you that this won't make your hair catch on fire or whatever might possibly go wrong, but I have had no problems doing this and this is what I do in my system. So I can't show you in real life how I do this because all these batteries are now top balanced and functioning well. But if I were to turn on this screen and if I were to come in here and see that one, you see these are all between 3.365 and 3.7 volts. But if I came in here and I looked in 3.71, so they're all within six millivolts of each other. But if I came in here and let's say they were all at like 3.4 something volts, and I had one that was at 3.32, well, that's dramatically lower than the others. That cell needs to be brought back up. So what you do, what I do, is I wait until that battery reaches its full state of charge. So on a sunny day like this, that's gonna be around two o'clock in the afternoon because that's what it takes to get these batteries all filled up on a sunny afternoon, unless I'm using a whole lot more power than normal in my house. And that's with just half of the solar panels I have. So once that gets full, I will turn the breaker off for that battery and I will pull this, this Anderson connector so that that battery is now isolated from the others. And all those cell voltages are going to start to drift downwards. And I'll take this power supply and I will connect it to the weak cell and make sure that I'm connecting it to the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive and I'll turn it on and I'll watch it. Now all the other cells are full, right? So I'm gonna take that cell up to 3.65 volts. I've got it set at 3.64, just a little marginal safety. 3.65 volts. And, it's, and as it gets there, as it gets closer, that amperage is gonna drop down. It might start at 12 amps. I know it says 40 here, but when you put it on a load, that's gonna happen if the cell was empty maybe. But that's gonna start at about 12 amps. As it gets closer to 3.65, it's gonna to start to get lower. When it gets to 3.65, it's gonna keep dropping down. When it gets in the range of one or two amps is all that's going in, I'll disconnect it. Now the others by then will have drifted downwards. They might be at 3.52 or something because they drift downwards after they're no longer taking a charge. They might have been close to 3.65 at that full state, but 
After I do that, I'm going to let that battery sit. And within an hour or two, those cells are all going to be fairly close to one another. And it'll be close enough that the passive balancer in this VMS will then take over and it will get everything balanced. On the subject of active balancers and passive balancers, I have told you that I have some pretty bad cells here. Not all of them, just, you know, some of them that I got from a bad supplier early on in the process. And yet, once I get these top balanced, and then I let them just operate in the system for a few days, I come out here and, okay. Let me, let me back up just a bit, because I haven't gone over this yet. Each of these inverters is tied to one another through a, through a low voltage cable that communicates with each other. This is the primary inverter and it communicates with inverter number two and inverter number three. It then also comes down and connects with the primary battery. And the primary battery then connects and communicates with all these other batteries. And each one has the dip switches set so that it knows what each battery in this series is. And when I get close to full, I can look on the app and I can look at what the highest and lowest cells are amongst all of these batteries. I don't mean the highest and lowest cell in that battery. I mean the highest cell in any of these batteries and the lowest cell in any of these batteries. And if I'm at, if I'm at 99% state of charge, the differential, the delta between the highest and lowest cell in all of these batteries will be four or five millivolts. That's what I find. Never more than 10 millivolts, which is just great. If you're, if you're there at the top of the state of charge, you are in good shape for getting the most capacity out of these batteries. And so that's all with passive balancers. If you had absolutely terrible cells, maybe an active balancer is the answer. I know there's a lot of people that swear by them and a lot of people that promote them or at least some people with great influence promote them a lot. But there's not a really good reason for them except really bad cells or a refusal to top balance the battery when you build it. If you don't want to top balance the battery when you build it and you put an active balancer on there and not too long, but depends on how bad the cells are towards each other at the beginning. Eventually, that two amp active balancer will balance that whole battery. But the price you pay for that is you have an active balancer on there forever. It's not needed. And an active balancer has a lot of power. And I believe that that active balancer has the power to do harm. And it's, uh, it's not something that I want in my batteries. Although, because of the clamoring for it, I fear that eventually that's what, mostly what you'll have available to you. So if you have a system like this, like I do, where you have BMSs that have passive balancers and talk to one another well, I suggest that you get extra BMSs and put them on the shelf. Because if your BMS goes out, or should I say when the BMS goes out, because that is that is what will fail on these batteries. And when it goes out, you're gonna want something that you can swap out and that will communicate with the batteries without problem. If you go looking for BMSs and those aren't available anymore because the market has changed, well, you may have heartburn. You may end up changing all your BMSs for the latest flavor. Uh, I think that that's all I wanted to cover in this video. 
I'm so pleased with the way this is working out for me and the energy independence that I've gained from it. I have a few more ideas for some videos that I think will help people that are in this situation of being off grid and using these batteries to keep their power on. And so, you know, you might want to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, please do that little thing that you do. I appreciate it. I look forward to your comments. Thank you very much for sticking with me this long. Bye-bye.